Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. And it is St. Patrick's Day here in 2016, so I wanted to get out an Irish whiskey video for you. So I decided to line up one of my favorite lines, the Red Breast line of Irish whiskeys. Now, Red Breast is produced at Middleton Distillery, the same one that does Jameson's and Powers line. So, you know, they're known for doing great whiskeys. This is just another example. Uh, the Red Breast line is done with malted and unmalted barley. They do use the pure pot still method, which is those big copper pot stills that they actually use a triple distillation on for these whiskeys. Try to get part like a very smooth, creamy type mouthfeel. Uh, by doing that. Other thing to note, the entire line is matured in Oloroso sherry barrels, so it does at least some time. I know the Redbreast 15 also does American Standard bar uh, Bourbon Barrel Matured Whiskey and kind of does a combination type thing, uh, but expect some Oloroso sherry influence in each and every one of these. Now, thing to note is that when they first came out here in the U.S., the one that first showed up was the standard Redbreast 12-year-old bottled at 80 proof used to retail right around 40 I think now it's up to about 50 or so dollars uh, it is again 80 proof whiskey very very nicely done uh, a few years after that they actually came out with the 15 year old as a limited edition um, so when that came out it was a little bit harder to find uh, it disappeared for I think a year or two and then luckily it came back and now it is actually part of their standard release so you can now readily find the red breast 15 after that they actually introduced the red breast 12 cast strength that is bumped up all the way to 115 proof so 57.5 abv coming from the 80 big step up retail price on this guy running about 80 85 dollars somewhere in there uh, but again you're paying for that just cast strength version of the 12. now back to that red breast 15 retail pricing on it was surprisingly about the same as the 12 cast strength even though it's only 92 proof, so it hasn't dropped all the way back down to 80. We're at 92, kind of right in the middle, but the same price range, right around 80, 85 dollars or so. Lastly, the newest release uh, to hit the U.S. is actually the Red Breast 21. Now, the 21-year-old retails around 200, 225, so it is pretty expensive, but it is spending a lot of time in the barrels. 21 years here, and the other thing to note is that it is. Uh, well, it's pretty phenomenal is what it is, but we're going to talk about why it's so expensive. I'm going to give you my nosing and tasting notes here in a second. You can decide for yourself if it's actually worth spending that type of money. Now, back over here, Red Breast 12 on the nose, standard 80 proof bottling. Really nice cereal grain base. There's some baked apples, some cinnamon spice on there. A little bit of a little bit of a chocolate note when you get on that edge of the glass kind of off to the side I start picking up a little bit more of the chocolate the Oloroso sherry is noticeable in that there's some dried red fruits in here and a little bit of like a, um, a nuttiness or a banana nut bread because there's a hint of banana with that nuttiness and it just kind of drives me to feel like that on uh, on the nose Overall, pretty, pretty uh, aromatic whiskey for about that $50 price range. Now, stepping up to the 115 proof version. Wow. Much, much sweeter. Wow. So that's the first thing you notice. And the 115 doesn't like blow you out of the glass. It's not really harsh coming through. I can still dive in there. But everything that I picked up here is just intensified. And the other thing I would say is that now on that, that cereal grain base, that almost like porridge type base, you're getting um, honey and also a lot of brown sugar and it's just popping out of the glass with the sweetness. Still with the dried red fruits, still with a little bit of that baked apple and cinnamon spice and a nice vanilla note kind of running throughout, giving adding to that sweetness of that brown sugar, almost like a, an cream or an icing type element underneath as well all right now to the 15 year old three more years of maturation just brought down to 92 proof wow that's a different whiskey so to whereas these two are very young and kind of vibrant and sweet with the spices this one is 
definitely showing its age here. I would say on this one, it's a little darker profile. So think like uh, plums or dried, almost prunes and dried figs as well. Not hardly any that, there's some roasted nut element as well, but not really like banana nut bread like I was getting over here. Just think like roasted nuts. The, the brown sugar and maybe like the sweetness that I was getting in the first two has now transformed into molasses. So you're getting that darker element. A more earthy profile in the oak. You're starting to, to get like old wood kind of influence on the nose. Almost, it's just earthy. It's just a, a darker, uh, deeper type whiskey. So I'm not going to say it's, it's a bad thing. It's just definitely a different type style. All right, now Redbreast 21 on the nose. <laughs> that one always makes me laugh because you would think if coming from 212s to the 15 and it really started showing its age, you're like, oh, 21 is just going to be ridiculous. It's going to be way, way uh, over oaked or too heavy of a whiskey. And it's not. It's actually very, very vibrant. And it's not only vibrant with the fruits that you find here, it's vibrant in tropical fruits. This one has loads, and I mean loads, of mango and guava. Those are the two that are really popping. And you actually kind of have to fight through the nose to get to the other ele elements because those are just so big. Underneath that, I would say there is a little bit of the cereal grain coming through. There is a little bit of that um, banana nuttiness as well. And maybe a little sprinkling of cocoa powder. Not a whole lot, just a little bit there. It does come off sweet because it almost comes off like um, honey sweetness again. So we've lost the darkness. We've lost the, 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 the older style that the 15 was heading to. And now we're back to a vibrant but more tropical fruit style on the 21. Okay, back to the 12. Standard bottling, 80 proof. Oh yeah, vanilla, right away, first thing you notice. Enters with a medium viscosity. It's not oily, it's not too thin, it's just medium. Maybe a hint just under medium viscosity. But vanilla note kind of driving it right out the gate. Runs you right into a little cinnamon. Um, okay, there is a little bit of that banana, uh, like a Maybe a little bit of an overripe type banana. It is that banana nut bread element. Chocolate after the mid palate. That cinnamon kind of swells with that, the nuttiness and the banana. Little bit of that baked apple, but not a lot. And then you start getting into that banana nut bread type element. Now here on the back end, you actually start getting a little bit of drying, a little bit of the the um, the younger wood type characteristics. So you're getting like a just a little tannins, a few tannins coming out of that wood. But there's so much greatness up front that that little drying element, I can almost contribute it to like a, like a shaved bitter chocolate because um, you do get that cocoa powder. So it's just, it's maybe that's just what it is. It's just like a bitter uh, cocoa powder type element on the back and it just dries it out just a little bit. But overall, very, very enjoyable whiskey, especially for $50. All right, now we're gonna go to the cast strength version. A little sip of water. Wow, yeah. Oof. Much, much bigger profile. Still developing. Still developing, very, very long. And that was just the first sip, wow, okay. Good medium to just above medium viscosity. Fairly oily here. The vanilla note that was so evident right up here up front is actually integrated here with like um, 
dried like um, I would almost say like dried cranberries and dried um, figs and plum that type element but that porridge that that cereal grain base is still coming through uh, like I mentioned before it was kind of like a brown sugar on the nose it's kind of coming through on the sweetness here not overly sweet but it's just the right amount to um, with that oiliness of the viscosity to just make it feel very very creamy very round while being big at the same time because that cinnamon that comes off right there at the mid palate it kind of swells doesn't grow too big it just swells on the mid palate wow okay there's actually a little bit of a Wow, first time I've ever noticed that. There's a little hint of tropical fruits that pop in just after the mid palate. And it's strange because I've never noticed that before, but it, it does make me understand why this has so much. Uh, it is in there, it's just so, such in the background of the thing. But cocoa powder, the same cocoa powder that was there, is here. Strangely, even though we're bumped up to 115 proof, it doesn't feel as, as drying as it did on the standard 80 proof version. I guess because of that, the big uh, volume of aromatics, the big volume of flavors, it just makes it last. And all, everything at front is lasting into the finish. Man, really, really nice. Chocolate those dried fruits, the maybe a little bit of that baked apple in with that banana nut bread with the brown sugar. A little bit of honey as well. Really, really nice. Gosh, mm. okay. It just goes on for such a long time on the finish. All right, 15 years on the red breast here at 92 proof. Oh, it's nice. It's different, but it's nice. It's um, it's more of a very like a relaxing type dram here. You know, like I said, and there it is again. These are vibrant. These are sweet kind of vibrant type styles of whiskey, especially this one, really sweet. And this is more almost like a contemplating type whiskey or an after dinner type whiskey where you want it a little softer. The cinnamon isn't as big. It's not as popping as either of these two but there is that hint of tropical fruits underneath everything after the mid palate. And it is just after the mid palate, let's see. As it enters its medium viscosity, dark fruits, plums, dried figs, the cinnamon and chocolate kind of, and I'd say dark chocolate, like 60%, kind of swell just a little bit on the mid palate then you get a little hint of that tropical essence the tropical fruit coming in and molasses that is what that is it is kind of a molasses sweetness to it dark dark uh dark flavor and then um as we get here on the back end yeah it's, that's exactly what it is it's molasses hmm But it's so round. This one is so round. That earthiness that I get on the nose, it's just comes through here is just dark fruits and and big round mature whiskey. Uh, think old sherry casks, you know, that have been around a long time, kind of imparting depth of flavor. A hint of that old barrel, that earthiness kind of comes through as well, but it's perfectly balanced in there with the, the chocolate and the little tropical fruits and that little molasses type element that runs through it all. Wow, really, really nice. Really, again, like I'm thinking more after dinner on that one. Really nice. All right, Red Breast 21. Mango and guava, nice. Wow, 
Okay, medium viscosity, maybe just a smidge up. I think, th I think the standard 12 cast strength may be right there with it viscosity-wise, maybe even a smidge more oily, but the flavor development is much more complex on the 21-year-old than it was on the 12 cast strength. And it's mainly because of those tropical fruits. It's very rare that you get tropical fruits this vibrant in a whiskey, Irish or any whiskey category. But I can tell the lineage. That's the nice thing about them. Because oh. underneath, I still get the porridge. I still get that nice cereal grain base. And then you're just, you're just slicing up mangoes and, and guava puree, let's say, on top of that. And this one's leaning more, instead of molasses, it's leaning more on the brown sugar. There's vanilla, almost like a... It's almost heading right back to that banana nut bread that I was getting early on here in the background with a little bit of that nuttiness going on. The chocolate isn't feeling so dark and fudgy, uh, kind of like 60% like I was getting here. It's actually more, it's getting more, a little bit more towards a combination of milk and dark as we get on this one. So, for uniqueness, tropical fruits pouring out of the glass, good oily, wow, cocoa powder just developing, old leather on the back end, really, really nice complex whiskey. If you don't mind spending 200, 225, the Red Breast 21 is a very, very unique experience. If you only feel like feeling, uh, maybe spending as top $80, $100, 12 cast strength can't be beat. Uh, the 15 is probably would be my choice after that just because it's more of an after dinner, contemplating, relaxing type whiskey. And then the standard 12, everyday type pour, great, great choice. Uh, but that's my Red Breast 12 lineup. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope everybody had a, a great and safe St. Patrick's Day. Uh, everybody keep leaving those great comments. I appreciate it. Have a good evening and cheers.